Former TNA World Tag Team Champions, the Motor City Machine Guns, are teased for an impending SmackDown debut in a vignette last night on the USA Network. AJ Styles returns to SmackDown last night, but possibly picks up an injury in his return match against Carmelo Hayes. Has the brand new Raw logo for the upcoming Netflix move in 2025 been revealed? The Bloodline retained their WWE Tag Team Championships last night in a ladder match on SmackDown. Naomi is now one of the co-hosts alongside Bianca Belair and and Jade Cargill for Bad Blood tonight in Atlanta, Georgia. Mitchin defeats Chelsea Green in a dumpster match. We've got a health update on Killswitch following his recent pneumonia scare. And also an update on the NWA's relationship with the CW Network after the premiere of WWE NXT. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of professional wrestling today. Let's start off with the Motor City Machine Guns, the former TNA World Tag Team Champions. We know that they've signed with WWE. Previously, there was speculation that they were going to be debuting on the NXT brand on the CW Network, but it looks like they are now bound for the main roster. A brief clip shown during SmackDown appears to be teasing the blue brand debut and arrival of the Motor City Machine Guns. The multi-time tag team champions across the world left TNA at the end of their contracts in April, with reports emerging in September that they had signed with WWE and were tipped to land in WWE NXT. However, it appears they are SmackDown bound following Friday night's tease, which featured Detroit imagery and a message of coming soon. PW Insider has since reported that the tease was intended for the Motor City Machine Guns ahead of their arrival, as if to all but confirm, a video began circulating on social media in which WWE's Brazilian commentary team simply declared the teaser to be for the guns. Now, the Guns' WWE arrival could mark the end of a saga that followed their TNA departure, in which they were initially reported to be heading to AEW in April. They had previously wrestled for Tony Khan at All Out back in 2022. However, it was later reported that they hadn't locked in a deal and were likely headed to WWE instead, despite talks held with Khan pertaining to creative if they were to join the organization. The tease for the Guns also comes shortly after Khan reportedly opted to exercise a injury time added on to Ray Phoenix's contract, as well as to El Zero Miedo, specifically for Phoenix's contract, extending it for nearly a year as a result of the injury time and possibly preventing another tag team, that being former AEW World Tag Team Champions, the Lucha Brothers, from joining WWE. Now, AJ Styles, speaking of former TNA alumni on SmackDown last night, AJ Styles made his return to the blue brand, but it didn't go too well for the former WWE champion. AJ Styles returned to WWE television to a massive reaction from the SmackDown crowd in Nashville, Tennessee, but he limped to the back without putting much weight on a possibly injured leg during a match with Carmelo Hayes. As of this recording, it's currently unclear whether this injury is legitimate or part of a wider storyline. Now, country music star Hardy introduced the phenomenal one to the ring to kick off the show. Styles not been seen since losing an I Quit match to undisputed WWE champion Cody Rhodes at Clash at the Castle earlier this year. Styles said he missed the crowd and that he had done some things he regretted over the last few months, but he was there to rebuild the legacy of AJ Styles. He was interrupted by Carmelo Hayes and the pair traded barbs back and forth. United States champion LA Knight's music hit after Hayes attempted to leave the ring when he was challenged by Styles. Knight said that if Hayes could defeat Styles, he'd make a case to general manager Nick Aldis that Hayes deserved the championship match he sought after. The pair locked up as the bell rang and battled back and forth. Hayes dumped Styles out of the ring and sent him crashing into the announce desk. After a commercial break, Styles dropped Hayes across his knee from the fireman's carry position, but his foot appeared to have not been planted properly, causing his knee to buckle. Styles pulled himself under the ropes and a ringside doctor checked on him. The referee called for the bell as Styles couldn't continue the match. Before Alicia Taylor could declare Hayes the winner, Knight interrupted once again and hit Hayes with a BFT. Styles was later backstage being checked on by a doctor. Commentary said he had been taken to a local hospital. If we get any more details, again, if this is a story, if it's legitimate or anything like that, we'll let you know in an upcoming video. Now, has the new logo for Monday Night Raw, once it moves to Netflix next year, possibly been spoiled due to toys on a shelf? Well, a new logo for Monday Night Raw has potentially been revealed ahead of the show's move to the streaming giant next year. WWE Television is preparing for a big change with Raw moving to Netflix in the United States in January of 2025. 
with SmackDown giving its presentation a shakeup after moving to USA Network and NXT doing the same for the CW Network, it appears Raw will follow suit, with a new logo for the brand seemingly been revealed. New WWE toy sets have been released featuring Netflix Raw WWE logos. The new Raw logo appears to be white with red stripes above and below, almost reminiscent of the current logo fused with an inverted War Raw is War logo. Now, again, you can see the picture on the screen right there. Let me know what you think about it. Do you like it? Don't you like it? It. Do you think it is a bit of a spoiler for what this uh, new logo is going to look like? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, while Netflix will be the home of Raw in the US, international regions will also receive SmackDown and premium live events on the service as well. In addition to that, actually, today's Bad Blood premium live event is listed to air on Netflix in Brazil. Again, possibly the beginning of this relationship when it comes to Netflix and WWE internationally as well. This has also been confirmed by Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics that indeed it will be airing internationally in Brazil uh, as part of the PLE. Now, go back to SmackDown last night. The Bloodline still have gold in their faction thanks to them retaining the WWE Tag Team Championships in a ladder match. What was originally a triple threat ladder match for the WWE Tag Team Championships turned into a violent spectacle of revenge as the Bloodline squared off with well known rivals in DIY and the Street Profits in the main event of Friday's episode of SmackDown. The combined ire of DIY and the Street Profits was not enough to overcome SmackDown's most dangerous faction, however, and the Bloodline capitalized on the implosion of DIY and the Street Profits' temporary alliance to retain the titles. Tamatonga and Tongaloa used plenty of ladders and chairs to keep an upper hand for most of the match, despite early efforts to isolate the champions. The Bloodline were nearly defeated after Tonga and Loa secured steel uh, chairs in a planned assault on a grounded Angelo Dawkins. B-Fab, who accompanied the Street Profits to ringside, snatched Tonga's steel chair right out of his hand. The distraction allowed for DIY to attack the Bloodline with their own set of steel chairs, and both teams worked together to send the champions through tables. DIY and the Street Profits' temporary alliance imploded short thereafter with uh, which proved to be their undoing top of the ladder struggles from both teams allowed the bloodline to recuperate and the champions capitalize on the chaos to send both teams through ladders lower climbed the ladder to reclaim the wwe tag team championships as of this recording the bloodline have held the wwe tag team titles for 63 days at the expense of diy with the tag team madness in the rear view the bloodline can now focus on tonight's bad blood premium live event where jacob fatu and solo Soko will lock up with undisputed wwe champion cody rhodes and the returning original tribal chief roman reigns neither rhodes nor reigns interfered in last night's ladder match Speaking of bad blood, we've got yet another co-host for the event. In a video posted to social media last week, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair, hinted at being joined by surprise VIP guests. On the go-home show for Saturday night's Bad Blood, Jade Cargill was talking about returning to her stomping grounds of Atlanta when her tag team partner Belair informed Naomi she'll be joining them as co-hosts of the PLE. The move reunites Naomi with Cargill and Belair six months after their six-woman tag team victory at WrestleMania 4. Bad Blood features five matches, including Nia Jax defending the WWE Women's Championship against Bayley after the latter won the right to challenge by defeating the aforementioned Naomi. The friendship between the two remains intact despite the result, but when Bayley joined the backstage segment, it was clear that Belair still hasn't forgiven her for her actions as the leader of Damage Control. Naomi remains the bridge between the two sides. Ahead of her co-hosting duties, Naomi took on Tiffany Stratton on SmackDown, ultimately rolling Stratton up for the victory. Stratton has a tenuous alliance with the women's champion while being the holder of the women's Money in the Bank briefcase, meaning she's likely to be involved somehow at Bad Blood in that women's title match. Speaking of the women's division on SmackDown, we saw a dumpster match rarely seen in WWE nowadays between Mitchin Mia Yim and Chelsea Green. Mitchin shut Chelsea Green in the dumpster to win their match on SmackDown. This match was set up between Green and Mitchin following a spate of ambushes during recent weeks. The former looking to make a point of attacking her rival with a trash can. As a result, they battled during Friday's show with the ultimate goal of putting the other in a dumpster and shutting the lid by any means necessary. Green almost had the match won with a Canadian destroyer, allowing her to put Mitchin in the dumpster, but her opponent managed to fight her way out of it before the lid could be closed. 
Mitchin avoided, and I'm pretty her onto a sheet pan in the ring to land the eat defeat in the closing stretch, put, placing a trash can over Green's head and sending uh, landing a cent on on her. Piper Niven made a timely appearance as Mitchin set a table over the dumpster, only to fall foul with an attempted cannonball into the side of the dumpster that Mitchin avoided. Mitchin continued to brawl with Green on the apron, gaining the upper hand to land a power bomb through the table into the dumpster. Mitchin then closed the lid, winning the match and leaving Green covered in the dumpster's contents. Now, a bit of an update here when it comes to Killswitch, the former AW World Tag Team, TNT, and Trio's champion after he had a very serious health scare over the last week or so. Additional details have surfaced regarding the condition of former AEW TNT champion Austin Mattelson, also known as Killswitch Luchasaurus in All Elite Wrestling. Mattelson was found by his fiance collapsed in his home on September 27th, resulting in him being rushed to the hospital and diagnosed with double pneumonia. Fightful Select reported that Mattelson was placed on oxygen following his admission as his blood oxygen level was below 80%, as opposed to the normal range between 95% and 100%. And he was just days away from causing permanent damage to his lungs had he not been hospitalized. Now, while it was originally unclear how long he would be out of action, Dave Meltzer is reporting in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Killswitch is expected to be out of action for at least one month. Meltzer also noted that Killswitch had been ill leading up to his hospitalization, which led him to miss the Grand Slam editions of AEW Dynamite and AEW Collision at Arthur Ashe Stadium, as he originally thought he had bronchitis. However, obviously, that was not the case. Before being admitted to the hospital, Killswitch was last seen wrestling at the All In Pay on August 25th, teaming with Nick Wayne and Christian Cage to lose the AW World Trios Championships in a ladder match. However, Killswitch would help Cage win the Casino Gauntlet match later on in the evening, awarding Cage a guaranteed shot at the AW World Championship, something that Cage has teased uh, cashing in over the last several weeks on AW television. Of course, fans at Wembley Stadium initially thought Killswitch was going to turn on Cage during the match as he entered the bout with his original ring name, Luchasaurus, displayed on screen, but it turned out to be an inside job in order to help Cage get back on track in his pursuit of the AEW World Championship. And finally here, an update when it comes to the National Wrestling Alliance's relationship or maybe lack thereof with the CW Network. 2024 obviously has seen a lot of changes when it comes to the television landscape of professional wrestling. AEW recently announced a new media rights deal that will see them stream on Max from 2025 onwards, as well as continuing their relationship with Warner Brothers Discovery, having Dynamite on TBS and Collision on TNT. SmackDown has moved back to the USA Network after five years with Fox, while WWE NXT has left USA Network to be a part of the CW's weekly schedule. Schedule. Now, one company that has also seen a major change of late has been the NWA, who made their debut on the CW streaming app uh, back in, earlier this year in February 2024. But it seems that having two wrestling companies on the same network won't be happening. Both PW Insider and Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter have confirmed that NWA's weekly power has left the CW app. The move was made as predicted and speculated on October 1st, the same day as NXT's debut on the network. But for NWA, WA fans who still want to watch their weekly show, there is no need to worry as Power is now streaming on X. That will begin on Tuesday, October 29th. The show is also scheduled to keep its traditional airtime of 6.05 p.m. Eastern. Power was originally reported to be airing on the CW every week, not just the streaming app, the actual CW network every week, as NWA president Billy Corgan announced that the company had signed a television deal with a top 20 network in 2023 after three years of streaming on YouTube and Trilla TV respectively. However, that plan was reportedly changed due to, due to a controversial segment on their 2023 Samheim pay-per-view in which Father James Mitchell was seen snorting a Class A substance, many assuming to be something was not actually the substance but that's what it was perceived to be both the cw and nwa face serious backlash due to the spots and the nwa's programming would eventually end up on the cw network's app as opposed to actually on broadcast television but there you go guys the latest pro wrestling news for you be sure to smash a like on the like button be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner as always let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and i'll speak for you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or however you come across today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon